of this panel is this issue of likability and leadership. And uh, as you probably know, this issue is well discussed already. Uh, if you're following the presidential campaign at all, then you'll notice that just about every second article about Hillary Clinton says something about her likability issue or problem or what have you. And uh, it took me about 10 seconds looking online to find an article like this one from the Harvard Business Review. For women leaders, likability and success hardly go hand in hand. <laughs> so the basic idea here, and again, you're probably familiar with this already, but the basic idea is that women face social penalties for doing the very things that lead to their success. And this quote is from that HBR article. High-achieving high women experience social backlash because their very success, and specifically the behaviors that created that success, violates our, expectation, our expectations about how women are supposed to behave. Now, you may agree or disagree, and in fact, there's a lot of discussion and a lot of controversy about this exact issue. Um, but for today's panel, as the title suggests with the reframing uh, concept, we're going to try to rise above the fray, above the controversy of whether this issue exists or not. So notice, if you will, that Heidi and Darlene here are both incredibly accomplished. Heidi in the legal field, Darlene in, in industry, both have arrived, right, at the leadership pinnacle in various ways. So somehow or other, whatever that likability penalty is, they've either ignored it or overcome it or something. <laughs> right? So let's talk specifically today about what it is that female leaders do do to develop rapport, wield influence, and lead. Okay, so diving in here. The very first thing that came up when we first started talking about this um, was some of the confusion around the very definition of likability itself. So let me ask you, what is your definition of likability? I'll, I'll go first. Um, thank you. First of all, thank you for having me. I think, um, and thank you for the entire AppNexus team for pulling this together. I think this is amazing, and I love to see all these wonderful women under one roof. So thank you. Um, I think it's very important for us to, desc to describe the word and define the word likability. Like, what exactly is likability? Because likability within your social network is completely different than likability in business. And as a matter of fact, the same attributes that drive your friends to like you are not the same attributes that's going to make you successful in business. For example, if you're out with your friends, your girlfriend network, you know, you're very agreeable, you're outgoing, you're fun, but if you fast forward that to the business setting, how does that translate? It just doesn't translate. Because when you're in the business set setting, the one attribute that's the most important in my mind is effectiveness. How effective were you? and driving results, how effective were you in meeting a particular deadline? So it's very important for you to understand the difference between being like, liked in your social setting or being effective in a business setting. And I find that for women, it's, a, it's always a balance, right? So I personally constantly have to balance it. And for me, the most important thing is to be effective and well-respected for the work that I put out. Um, if you're the kind of person that needs to be like 100% of the time, that's perfectly fine, but just understand that those attributes may not scale and help you go up the corporate ladder. So without um, repeating everything, because I agree <laughs> with everything Darlene said, I think that effectiveness and respect are really important, but self-awareness is also important. So likability is different for every one of us, and it matters to a different degree and we behave in certain ways, and so if we're truly authentic to ourselves and we know ourselves, then you have to gauge whether likability in a professional setting as compared to the social setting matters to you because it doesn't really matter to uh, uh, how you feel about other people, but if it matters to you, if it matters that you are liked as compared to respected, feared, accomplished, you know, whatever that may be, use whatever words you want to use, then you have to adjust how you behave to that. And, and like Darlene said, if all you want to do is be liked, then you probably aren't going to be in a leadership position because you sometimes have to say no. And I know one of our former panelists talked about uh, being able to accept that some people in 
your team are not going to agree with you all the time. It doesn't mean they dislike you. It doesn't mean they think you're wrong. It doesn't mean they think you're not a good leader. Um, and so for me, I know that that is something that's important to me. And so I know for me on a daily basis, I struggle, whether you're, you know, you're perceived as at the top or you're still growing and you still have a ways to go. I, I deal with the fact that I want to be liked, but yet I have to make tough decisions and I have to be respected and sometimes they don't coincide with each other. And so for me, it's also about consensus building, but being very decisive when you need to be. So it sounds like for both of you, there's some element of likability translating into just respect in the, in the business context, if you will. So I guess the next thing I'd like to focus on, and you, you touched on this a little bit already about talking about the balancing, is what are some specific tactics you use in your life, in your role, to actually ensure that you are respected and get sort of that version of liked that you're looking for. So I know you both have opinions. Uh, <laughs> We're both opinionated women, right? Um, I'm going to start by saying that, I mean, one of the most uh, important tactics for me is to be well-researched. So I don't know if you know what that means. So if you're going out and you are coming up with an opinion or you have a position on any topic whatsoever, it's very important to be well-researched. Know your data. Have data that supports the claim. Because what you will see is that it's extremely important and very easy to get buy-in once you have data that supports your position, right? It could be, you know, um, historical data, market data, industry t trends, internal data, an expert's point of view. Anything that you have to support your claim, it's a lot easier to get buy-in. You want to, in your mind, always say to yourself um, and be able to answer the question, why? Why should I take this position? If the answer is, because I say so, that is not the right answer, right? So you always want to be backed, um, backed by, um, by data. Another thing that's very important to me in terms of business and in terms of balancing is your communication style, right? That's extremely important, and I see that all the time in women. There's a very thin line between being abrasive and being assertive. Assertive is always good, abrasive is not good, so you wanna balance that. And the way you do that is understanding your communication style, and everyone communicates differently. I tend to have a very authoritative tone, and I don't try it, I was just born with it. <laughs> I was like that since I was three, trust me. <laughs> so because of that, I balanced it. So that might be okay in a boardroom, that might be okay in senior leadership meetings, but if it's a new orientation, um, employee welcome, I have to manage that tone. So understand your communication style, understand your tone, and you want to understand your audience, and you could modify that tone to meet the audience that you're presenting to. So that's really, really important. And the last thing I want to add is um, the concept of negativity. Ladies, negativity is a poison. Get rid of it. Seriously, get rid of it. The there is nothing worse than having to go into your boss's office every day with an issue, okay? And I think one of the panelists talked about that earlier. Come in with a solution. And it's okay for you to come up with a solution because most likely you're closer to the problem and your solution will be well respected. Okay, so again, really big, get rid of the negativity that's not gonna drive success. Awesome, Heidi. So I, I wanna first start with kind of the way that I, I try to behave on a daily basis, which is authenticity, um, accessibility, being accessible to my team, above, below me, my peers, transparency, being true to myself and being true to others um, so that people know who I am. I'm not a different person inside the office as outside, a little bit maybe, but, but I'm still the same person. So uh, authenticity and transparency, people know what I mean when I say it. Um, collaborative, consensus building, but decisive, which I talked about already. Um, and then the, in terms of tactics or strategies, um, I agree with Darlene when she said be, um, be strategic, what was it, it was um, be prepared, I mean I call it being prepared, you research, research. So I would say be prepared when you are speaking, when you are going into your boss's office, when you're 
at a table and you need to, to be collaborative, be prepared. I also think it's really important to listen. And there's been tons of articles, in fact, there was a great New York Times article just this past weekend about the fact that people don't listen. And in fact, there are studies shown that when you are hearing someone else speak on a, on a matter to which you either do not like or do not agree with, you hear less of it than if you're hearing something you like or understand. And so if you think about the fact that when you're doing the talking, the people with whom you're speaking aren't really listening to everything you're saying, you're a much more effective leader if you can do a lot of the listening and then actually act on what they're saying. It doesn't mean you have to agree with everything that they're saying, but do a lot of listening. I also keep and reserve my power chits. They are, you know, it, it, I, hopefully people know what I mean by power chits, and I use them strategically, whether they're for myself or for my team. I try to pay them forward so that I empower others, and sometimes it's actually helpful to help myself because that helps me help other people, but use them strategically. And I think the last thing that ha really has to do with likability is I use the fact that I am liked by my peers and those who, with, with whom I work as a way to um, have trustworthiness with them. And that allows me to be in the inner circle more than if I was, quote, unlikable. And so instead of using likability as a negative, I use it to help empower me and those around me. So again, I feel like we're hearing another piece of this definition of likability in this context, which is trustworthiness or trust, just generally, because everything you're describing, giving reasons, understanding your audience so that you can communicate more fully, being authentic, these are all components of just building trust as a, as a leader. So I think that's really powerful. So. Just to wrap up then, let's try to make these tidbits a little bit more vivid. I'm gonna ask each of you for some stories. Can you give us a story about you flexing your particular leadership, not leadership and likability style uh, in the workplace? I'm always likable, Catherine. <laughs> always. Um, Just tell us about yesterday then. <laughs> Um, let me see, so I started off at finance very early on in my career, and, and for those of you who are in finance, or for those of you who have anything at all to do with the month and close, I'm sure you know about the month and close, right? It is the most stressful time of the month or the quarter for a finance organization. Um, and I remember a few times when I've had to communicate with my team in a very nice manner <laughs> for them to stay late on a Friday night so we can meet a Monday oh, no. deadline. So I can't say I was too likable during those times, especially on a Friday night when, you had, when we had to work very late. Um, but at the end of the day though, despite the fact that it was tough for me to communicate that for them and the team wasn't very happy with working very late, we were able to meet our deadlines. And overall, we're a very high performing team. And it's great to be part of a high performing team. So again, it's always a constant balance. At that point in time, the decision might seem that like it's not a good decision and it might reflect in a position where you're not likable. At the end of the day, as long as you're driving the team forward and creating a high, high energy, high power team, everyone benefits. So you may not have been likable in the moment, but you were likable as a leader because you were creating something much bigger. That's right. Awesome. <laughs> and Heidi? So I took a different example to give you, which is a little more social at the office um, about my leadership style. Um, just this week, we had our holiday party at, at my office, and the global chairman of my firm, who is a white guy in his 60s, uh, after about an hour, looked at me and said, okay, well, I'm gonna get out of here because I don't think anybody else really wants me to be here and I'll let them go all, you know, everybody can go and have fun um, because I won't be here. And I, you know, turned to myself and I said, self, um, I, I actually think they would get a kick out of me getting up on the dance floor and getting everybody up and dancing because it shows that the leadership really wants to be part of the team and is having a good time and can relax. And it got everybody up on the dance floor and everybody was excited about it. And it was just a different leadership style. And when we were talking about likability, um, you know, there's the, you can be feared or you can be sort of 
respected um, but liked, and so there's different styles, and that just was illustrative of my style. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming and having this conversation. It's been fabulous, both on stage and off. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.